It was a clear March morning in Bath County, Kentucky, in 1876, when meat started falling from the sky. Cloudy were the chance of meatballs, a neat year shower. That's right, meat. A local farmer's wife named Mrs. Crouch told local reporters, between 11 and 12 o'clock, I was in my yard, not more than 40 steps from the house. There was a light wind coming from the west, but the sky was clear and the sun was shining brightly, without any prelude or warning of any kind, and exactly under these circumstances, the shower commenced. Not just any shower, but a shower of fresh, raw meat. Some lumps as light as snowflakes, some that reached up to three inches in length. For several minutes, Mrs. Crouch and her husband, Alan, watched as the unusual downpour fell around them before it finally ceased, leaving the sky as clear and as sunny as it had been before. Immediately, the Crouches believed that the meat shower had either been a miracle or a grisly warning. Before long, word of the meat shower spread, bringing flocks of curious neighbors to the scene. In the end, an area of about 100 yards long and 50 yards wide had been covered in chunks of meat. The question, how did it get there? Meet Kentucky Meat Shower culprit number one, nature's cleanup crew, and my best friend, Virgil the Black Vulture, who resides here at Whispering Willow Wild Care in Schenectady, New York. Now, Virgil and I are here to teach you today about just how amazing black vultures are and how important they are to the ecosystem. So what does the black vulture have to do with the Kentucky Meat Shower? Well, let's talk about their ecological role. Vultures are scavengers, detritivores, meaning that they eat what's already dead. Roadkill, diseased animals, all those nasty things that other predators don't want to eat is on the menu for these guys. Vultures, upon eating dead things, can gorge themselves up to 20% in their body weight, and that makes them a bit heavy to fly. Considering these guys are already the heaviest of the 32 vulture species, these guys can weigh up to four to five pounds, which is pretty heavy considering birds have hollow bones. Now, when these guys are feeling threatened by predators, and they don't have many, maybe coyotes coming to feed on the carcass, or golden eagles, these guys have what's called defensive vomiting. That's their defense mechanism, is to throw up when they're nervous. So when a predator comes by, these guys will projectile vomit what they just ate at the predator. And this does two things. One, it stinks to high heaven. And also, if it gets in the predator's eyes, it's going to be almost like pepper spray for these guys. Vultures now, after expelling their gut, are going to be 20% lighter and are going to be able to make a quick getaway. So going back to the Kentucky meat shower, when it rained meat that day over Kentucky, the most likely culprit was a spooked flock of vultures. Perhaps they were spooked in the air by a golden eagle, and they vomited their stomach contents to make a fast getaway. Hence, meat showers! Now, vultures are one of my favorite families of birds by how intelligent and curious and playful they are. These guys live in large flocks called committees, mostly composed of several different family groups. And in these family groups, they'll share with each other food, they'll forage with each other, and at night, a bunch of different of these family groups are going to roost together for protection against predators. Now let's talk about vultures' ecological role as nature's cleanup crew. These guys eat all the dead, disgusting things that other predators don't want to eat. These carcasses can contain viruses and bacteria, such as botulism, anthrax, or even rabies. So how do the black vultures eat these things? These guys have a stomach acid with a pH of one. Now just a reminder on the pH scale, zero is going to be the most acidic you can get, whereas 14 is going to be the most basic you can get. Seven is neutral, and that's at the water that we drink. 
These guys having a stomach acid with a pH of 1 is akin to the strength of car battery acid. Their stomach acid is strong enough to dissolve all these bacteria and diseases, and even strong enough to corrode metal. How metal is that? These guys are going to locate food by means of sight rather than smell, and they will utilize birds such as the turkey vultures who can smell to help them find food. These guys are going to coast on thermals or warm up drafts of air. That way, these guys don't have to expend a lot of energy. They can stretch out their wings and soar. Black vultures have a wingspan of up to five feet, almost as long as I am tall. And on these thermals, these guys can look down to see if they can spot any carcasses or any turkey vultures who might be able to spot the carcasses for them. Because black vultures are scavengers, and not predators themselves, that's reflected in their body shape. You can see on his head, his very large hooked beak for tearing into carcasses. However, his feet on the other hand have rather blunt talons and aren't really made for gripping or perching. When these guys are feeding young in the nest, they aren't carrying food back to them the way most raptors are. Instead, they're carrying food back to them in their crop and they're going to regurgitate that food for their young. Another unique adaptation that vultures have for feeding on carcasses is their adorable little bald heads. Now lacking feathers on their heads are actually an adaptation for when they're sticking their faces in carcasses. They're not getting blood and guts all over their feathers. They're keeping themselves nice and clean. Another unique adaptation that vultures have for keeping clean and keeping cool is called urohydrosis. And that means these guys are going to defecate on themselves to keep clean and cool. So by defecating on themselves, they're cooling off their feet through the process of evaporation. Also, remembering that their stomach acid is as strong as car battery acid, when they defecate, their fecal is just about hand sanitizer for them. That very acidic fecal is going to kill all the bacteria and parasites that might be on their feet. Trailside Museum and Zoo does not condone nor recommend self-defecation as any means of sanitization or cooling. Trailside Museum and Zoo is not liable for any self-defecation that may have occurred during this video. Vultures are also going to bathe through the process of taking sun baths. Now you may see the vultures at Bear Mountain often with their wings out. This is actually because birds are government drones. Biden made them solar powered and that's how they recharge. Nah, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. What they're doing there is using the heat of the sun to warm themselves. And their black feathers are going to help conduct that heat. They're also using the UV radiation from the sun again to help kill bacteria and parasites that might be in their feathers. How neat is that? Another strange and unique fact about vultures is that these guys don't have a bird song. And that's because these guys lack a syrinx or the bird equivalent of a voice box. So when it comes to singing, the best these guys can do are a couple of huffs and grunts and growls. Now that we know all that about black vultures, that leaves us with one more mystery. Why do they all flock to the bear den at the zoo? Well, we don't have the exact answer, but we do have a couple of good theories. Our first more morbid theory is that they see our black bears less active than they would be in the wild, and they might assume that they are sick or injured and could possibly make a meal out of them soon. Our second theory is that black vultures will actually follow around black bears and other large carnivores in the wild because when they hunt and make a kill, they have leftovers they can steal. Our third theory is that the bear den perfectly mimics the habitat that black vultures like to nest in. It's very wide open with lots of craggy cliffs where these guys will typically lay their eggs. Now, my theory is that they are just friends. Black vultures are very curious, intelligent, and social birds. I often see them playing with the black bear's toys more often than the black bears play with their own toys. And from getting to know Virgil, he just wanted to be friends with 
every single species of animal that came into the rehab clinic, whether or not they wanted to be friends with him. Either way, I hope you guys have a new perspective on black vultures and learn to love them just as much as I do. Get it, Virgil, get it, yeah. Get it, Virgil, get it, oh yeah. Look at his move, he's got the move. Get it, Virgil, get it, get it, Virgil, get it. Get it, Virgil, get it, yeah. Get it, Virgil, get it. Get it, Virgil. Oh, he's doing his hops. He's doing his hops.